A South African Cape parrot is one of the most endangered bird species on earth. Experts believe that there are just less than a thousand adults left in the wild. This is because constant industrial deforestation has destroyed their habitats. Many of them left find it hard to or have to find another area to live. The Cape parrots that stay behind have tried to adapt, but they live in constant battle for survival. For years, biologist Steve Boyce has been involved in saving this rare parrot. Okay, wonderful. Once this wild Cape parrot is back to full health, she'll be released. She's been suffering from beak and feather disease. Conservation biologist Steve Boyce runs a project to save the Cape parrots from extinction and rebuild its population. There are only a thousand left in the wild. Beak and feather disease is highly contagious and represents a moral danger to the species. When this bird was first brought in, she was in very bad shape. She was very thin. She was in an awful condition. I'm surprised that she, that, that she survived and that she's progressed as well as she has. It's, to me, it's absolute revelation. This robust, strong bird here. The virus makes the feathers fall off. This patient could no longer fly and was stuck on a branch when Boyce and his team came to the rescue. She remained in poor health for a year and a half. Then Boyce started to feed her and some other sick birds the species' favorite traditional food, the fruit of the yellow wood tree. As soon as we started feeding them yellow wood fruits after trying everything, uh, we started to see the virus go down in their blood so far that we couldn't even find it until we used a new technique and found it at very low levels. So this is the medicine for Cape parrots that is missing from their diet. So it's not just wonderful nutrition, it is a medicine for them. Researchers here in Cape Town are considering what effect climate change is having or could have for the bird population. How would vegetation and animal population react if temperatures rise and rainfall drops? Germany's development agency, GIZ, is supporting the research. You would need, I would say, at least another two degrees of temperature change and in the region of a five to ten percent reduction in rainfall. You know, if, if you're looking at that kind of a scenario, that I would think is, is going to start having an adverse effect on, on, on Afromontane forests. If their forest habitats are further reduced, the Cape parrots might be wiped out. Their food of choice is already hard to find because countless of yellow wood trees, once in abundance, have been brought down. This fine specimen is a thousand years old. The forests were full of mature yellow woods until the commercial lovers came. Yellowwoods were part of the Industrial Revolution in South Africa. Millions of these trees were removed for railway sleepers and mining timber to send it underground. But today, yellowwood, because of its beautiful colour, is one of the most valuable timbers on earth. A mature tree fetches 25 to 30,000 euros. Although the government has set a limit on the number of trees that may be felled, illegal logging continues. As you can see with uh, the sawdust still here, uh, this is very recently logged. The leaves are still alive. Everything in the upper canopy is still alive. So this was in the last week. We have now lost another 200-year-old, 250-year-old yellowwood tree. Though yellowwood food may be the perfect food in containing antiviral agents, it's now scarce and the birds have torn to acorns. But they contain toxins, too much fat, and sugar. Cape parrot need cavities to breathe in, but suitable natural cavities are in short supply now. So, the Cape Parrot project has put up hundreds of nesting boxes. Steve Boyce checks to see if they are in good nesting condition and can keep out the rain. The project is planning to reforest large stretches of land with yellow wood trees then the pirates will once again have their perfect food the year round. The Cape Parrot Project pays villagers to tend seedlings of yellow wood and other indigenous species, about one euro per tree and more money to look after them later.
This project is very good for us as a community because when we get money out of this project, we buy things like chairs and tiles to make the community all beautiful. In this valley, 10,000 trees have already been planted. There should be a million more to come. For more on this edition of Eco at Africa, you can actually log on to our websites and check out more on that. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. We have been coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya, here at the Mamba Village. And as you can see in my background, I just might be floating on water. So until next time, it's bye-bye for me. I can only second that, Joy. As always, it was a pleasure that you could join me and Joy. Leave a comment on the show on Facebook or on Twitter or send us a mail. Check out the addresses in the credits. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you for our next edition of Eco at Africa. Bye-bye. <laughs>